Um, and we're going to talk about, we're going to do a series um, on the Holy Spirit. And I love teaching. If you've been in this church for any long length of time, you know my favorite subject is the Holy Spirit. Why? Because when you become a believer, um, and you say yes to God, I want to serve you, it was the Holy Spirit that brought revelation of that knowledge, that you were a sinner, that we're no good, so I need something more, um, that um, I was in darkness and I was in light. Um, that was the Holy Spirit that did that, and, and it's really a, 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 a amazing, uh, uh, it's, a, it's amazing to understand that because He's never leaving you ever since that moment. Amen. I'm going to show you why Jesus taught that. But if you would look at first, uh, if you turn to uh, chapter 16, verse 23, I'm just going to read that before I start, and I'm going to pray, and I'm going to I want to teach through this chapter. Um, and most of us here probably know this, but I I'm hoping um, that God will uh, give you some more, uh, some just some more insight, more revelation, more understanding. Uh, what Jesus meant in this chapter, because you really got to read all of the book of John, or the last three chapters before you get here, to maybe fully understand it. Um, but anyway, let's look at verse 23. We're going to have a really fun, as we're going to have a fun ending to this sermon today. In the la in that day, say that, in that day, everybody say in it's good. That day. Very good. You will no longer um, ask me anything. I tell you the truth. My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Father, I thank you today, God, that you um, give us joy. And I thank you, Father, when we ask, it says here, anything in your name that you would give to us so we can, our joy will be complete. Father, help us, Holy Spirit, help us understand what, this, what you are telling us this morning. And Father, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. Ask anything in his name. Well, let's go back and find out how we can do that, okay? So, the... If you go back, we have to kind of go into chapter 15. In your Bibles, if you, I don't know if it's titled, but chapter 15, we're not going to read any of this, but chapter 15 talks about the vine and the branches. If we are in the vine and we are in the branches, that means we're attached to God, to Jesus and His ways, and then we will prosper, we'll have good fruit, right? We're in the vine, we're in the branch. If we're not, and we don't produce good fruit, we could be cut off and thrown in the fire, which represents us being in darkness instead of in the light. Then Jesus goes on to explain to his disciples how when he leaves the earth that they're going to be persecuted. And they're going to go, they're going to be even kicked out of the synagogue. They're going to, they're, they're, they're going to be uh, made, uh, um, even could be killed because, and, and you look at the first part of chapter 16, it tells you that because they don't know Jesus or they don't know the Father. And I saw fast forward to 2015, and I go, wow, there's things happening in the world because people are doing real horrific things because they don't know who Jesus is, and they don't know who the Father is. And he, Jesus was just at this point really revealing to his disciples that he's going to leave this earth really soon. He's going to die for the sins of the world, he's going to go to the grave, and he's going to resurrect. And he's trying to reveal this, like this is one of those last kind of moments, I'm going to do this, and I want you to understand this one thing. And it's really important that these horrible things are going to happen to you, but it's okay, because I'm coming back. Amen? Hallelujah. He's coming back. And if he comes back, he says, now all these wonderful things are going to happen. So even if you are persecuted, even though your life might be uh, taken for my name's sake, you're going to have joy, and your joy is going to be complete. How about that, right? God promised Joy. How many joyful people do I have here this morning? Okay, three, four, five, six. Okay, so by the end of the sermon, we are going to have everybody's hands raised, and we're going to have complete joy in the house. Can I guarantee that this morning? Yes. yes, because I know what the Word of God says. Right? Can we have complete joy? I, I think so, because Jesus himself said that something's going to happen, 
and I'm going to return, and you're going to not have to ask me for anything anymore. You're going to ask the Father, which never happened before. Because remember, the whole sacrificial system, we had to go to the high priest, we had to sacrifice lambs, we had to go to the holies of holies. We could never enter into the presence of Father God. But now what's going to happen next, we have an opportunity to be actually in God's presence and ask Him anything we want. Because our Father, He loves you. And He's going to provide for you the greatest thing in the world, salvation. Amen? And joy that is complete. How about some smiles on the house today? Come on. Uh, yes, Tina, that's very good. We have joy. Our joy can be complete. Well, what do you mean? You don't know the craziness I go through. I don't know, but God does. Amen? So let's go through this together, and let's look at why it is important that Jesus said, I'm going to give you something, because when I leave, you're not going to be alone. Amen? And so we take this story literally. We can take this story literally and say the disciples needed to know this information because Jesus was going to be crucified. We know that. But then we can take it, we can say, look at it. It has some application for me and you today because Jesus leaving, he provided this for us, the Holy Spirit, so we can have this access to God that we couldn't have before because of his blood and because of his resurrection. You have this opportunity to. Amen? Come on. I was nothing, and then I accepted. I received. I understood. Revelation came to me. Jesus was real. And in that moment, my life changed because now I have this Heavenly Father, this God that loved me and cared about me, and I, I was nothing. He provided me. And then I learned that it was the Holy Spirit that showed me that. And this same Holy Spirit guides me and leads me to truth. The same Holy Spirit informs me about how much Father God loves me. And I'm never alone. I'm never by myself. All the thoughts I don't have to hold captive in my head by myself, they'll rattle my neck. I know the Holy Spirit will help me deal with all those, figure them all out, and I can have joy that's complete. Hallelujah. Are you happy? I think everybody should go to Southern California for a week. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's just joy, right? It's fun. It's, I mean, just to get away and have, just sit on that little beach, watch the little waves come in and go out. And God, you are so amazing. You are so amazing. Your love is so great. Let's look at verse 7, or verse 5. It says, Now I'm going to him, I'm going to him who have sent me. That's Jesus saying he's going to be where? With the Father. Yet none of you have asked me, where are you going? Because I have said these things, you are full of grief. But I tell you the truth. It is for your good that I go, I'm going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. So this word counselor, I went back and did a little study on that. And the word counselor is also means um, advocate. It also means, um, I should turn this in my notes because that would be helpful, right? Um, it, it also means helper. That's the one I like the best. A, a counselor counsels you when you need some help, right? Uh, advocate, I think, will speak on your behalf. So I really didn't like that translation. But it really means somebody that, it, it really uh, comes out to the degree. It means somebody that's going to come alongside you. Some power, some force, some person that's going to be alongside you and will always be there. How many like to have a helper right by your side? Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm going through right now, but do you? Oh, yeah, this is what you're supposed to do. Okay, very good, I'll do that. Is that too simple? That's what it says. It says the counselor, the helper, is going to be with So the disciples are going to have to rely on this helper, and that same helper is with you. So I'm walking through life, and I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. I messed up my life because of the things I did, because I thought I could do it on my own. Come on. Because we're really smart, intelligent people, because God created us that way, but we don't recognize Him yet. So we do everything on our own. We do it by our own power, our own intelligence, and we messed it up. Just me or all of us. So that happens, and all of a sudden we realize, because the Spirit of God, our helper, is right there beside us going, Hey, Bob, you know, if you would just do this, or you would love this person more, or you would forgive, or if you would just, you know, and this is what our, what our, our friends say, if you would default to loving this in this situation, I'll take care of it. And we go, okay, Holy Spirit, and this is what happens, we, we have to, uh, we don't like to use this word in the Christian community, 
but when the Holy Spirit tells us that, we realize we're wrong, we need to, what? We need to, we need to repent. We need to repent. What does the word repent mean? I know, because I was in the uh, churches back down south, you have to repent! This is what they would do. They would point their finger at us and we're all sinners and we're no good and we're trapped. But that's not really what it means. Repent, if it was taught properly, is like this. I thought I could handle the situation by myself and I realized that I can't, so I'm not going to allow God to help me with the situation. Hallelujah. Come on. That's what it means. So the counselor, the helper, is comes alongside. It says, alongside you. But then I went to read the scriptures. It says that your body our temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is not only alongside us, helping us, but He's also in us. Come on, let's get happy. I mean, come on. Our helper is with us all the time. He's going to lead us and guide us in everything. Let me, let me not over, I'm going to get to the end of my sermon before I get to the, the middle. But anyway, let's look at this. It says, the counselor will, will in verse um, 7, the counselor will not, not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regards to sin. What's one of the Holy Spirit's responsibilities? It is to convict the world, the world, the world here means those that are not believers of sin. So when we say we need to go out and evangelize and win the lost to Jesus, well, all we have to do is go out and love people. Because it's the Holy Spirit's responsibility to get victim of their sin. So when, I, when I learned this as a young a preacher, as a young, I was got called into ministry, when I, when, when I realized that it wasn't my responsibility to change you or change the world, I thought, what a freedom. I can come up here and enjoy teaching now. It's like, I don't have to beat you up. Like, you don't have, you don't have to do what the pastor says. You really have to do what your helper is telling you to do because your helper will say, like, will teach you true. It's all true. He will lead you to truth. So let's go on a little bit further. If you have a, a pen or a pencil, you should underline these things in your Bible. This is like, if you want to know what the Holy Spirit does, this is what he does. It's so amazing. He's a, he's a gentle counselor. He's a, a great helper. Amen? He's, he's going to convict the world of their sin, right? And, uh, because of, uh, of guilt in regards to uh, sin, and righteousness and judgment in regards to sin. Righteousness and judgment. So there's a judgment coming, but there's righteousness. Righteousness will lead us into righteousness, which means he'll lead us into right relationship with God. Look up the word righteousness. It means right relationship with God. So the Holy Spirit is going to lead you to the right relationship with God. Why? What happens? If I'm selfish or if I've hidden sin in my heart or I, my mind's all messed up on things, the Holy Spirit's going to help us change those things. And then maybe we need to repent or ask God to forgive us, and then we're into right relationship. Amen? Isn't it always great? Like, uh, I don't know, you guys never argue here, I'm sure. But when I was, uh, me and Tina did once, I think I can remember. Um, but I remember that day. Can I tell that story? I didn't even have it in my notes. I, I, I usually ask permission, but um, you know, right? So how this is, right? We're Kestrels. We do this. So anyway, um, uh, we were we went we had uh, become Christians, uh, became followers of Jesus. Uh, we were both uh, basically about 19 years old, newly married. We were married for a whole year already. Uh, we got married. We we're 18, uh, 18 and and uh, four or five months. That's all we were. Uh, we didn't know nothing. Uh, but we know a lot about each other now, but I won't tell the stories. So we had one of our, uh, uh, one of the first arguments as a new believer. They were, it kind of went like we were before we were believers, but this one was different. Because as we were arguing, I actually physically picked up Tina and put her on the bed. We're standing next to the bed anyway. We can't do this. And the moment I said that, the Spirit of God filled our bedroom. It was amazing. And I don't know what we said after that. And matter of fact, I can't even remember what he said after that. But we started laughing. I don't even remember what we were arguing about. I just remember we had the argument. But at that moment, the Spirit of God, I said, we can't do this. And it was over. And we laughed. And we just were laughing. And I'm like, what were we? No. I don't know who said it. One of us said it. 
What are we arguing about? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Joy was complete at that moment because we knew what we were doing was wrong. Amen? And laughter came. And we weren't like crazy laughter rolling on the floor. We were just laughing, you know? And uh, yeah. So now we laugh at each other all the time. Right? This is kind of fun. But anyway, so it was just the Holy Spirit at that moment said like, hey, to me at that moment, because I don't know about you, but um, we won't get into that. <laughs> that was hard enough. We're in, we, do, we try to be transparent around here, but you know, sometimes God's good. All right. Always good. Amen. Okay, as far as sin, because of man, uh, let's go down to uh, verse 10. In regards to righteousness, because I am going to be with the Father, where you can see me no longer. So where you can't see Jesus. So we teach our children, Jesus lives in your heart. Well, that's not really true. Right? Jesus, where is Jesus right now? Anybody? Yeah. At the right hand of the Father, and he's doing something that's really amazing. He's interceding for you and me. How crazy is that? He died for us. He shed his blood for us. He cleansed us. He rose from the dead. Victory over Satan, hell, death, and the grave. He holds the keys in his hands now. And now, he's not done with us because he knows we need a lot of help. Send us this advocate, this helper. And not only that, he says, I'm going to go sit at the right hand of the Father and I'm going to pray for every one of you. Every day. That's very cool. So I'm not on this journey by myself. I mean, he is still taking care of me. Amen? And the Father loves me so much. Amen? Hallelujah. Come on. All right. Um, don't get excited. Uh, wait till the end, okay? Um, he will convict the world. Okay, I, I'm lost in place here. I'm getting a new Bible. I'm getting a new Bible. Because th this Bible, I love this Bible. I love to read this Bible. I highlight this Bible. I wear it out. But I'm, when I preach, I, I need a lot a linear, what do you call linear Bible? So all the verses are one line. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, when I study, I study on my computer, and then I go on, on Sunday morning, I should bring my computer up here and, and use it, because it's a lot easier for me. Just telling you my faults, that's all. All right, it's good to confess your faults to one another, that your sins may be forgiven. I read that somewhere in the Bible, too. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. Um, uh, verse, uh, I am going to follow you with our blah, blah, blah. Um, verse 11, and in regards to judgment, because uh, the Prince of Peace of this world is now stands, come on, condemned, condemned. the enemy is chasing me, I'm, I got no victory, Pastor, I'm so, pro I just, I have so many problems, no, listen, I read from the word of God that that guy is already gone, Amen. matter of fact, when the Holy Spirit is in you, you have, just as a child, have so much power over every evil situation in your life. Every evil situation, all you have to do is say something. In the name of Jesus, get out of here. Let's practice it, right? In the name of Jesus, get out of here. Every thought held captive to God. So every time the, the enemy says you're no good, you're not worthy, there's, you know, because that's how the enemy attacked Adam and Eve. It's in the brain. Did God really say that? Did God really call you? Does God really want you to have joy? He, he, he goes, his tactics hasn't changed since the beginning. Go back to Genesis read it. It doesn't change. He comes at us the same way. So we have victory because he stands condemned already. Why? Not because of us. Because of what Jesus did. Right? So I have no power of my own. I have nothing. But I have authority because Jesus gave it to me. He stands condemned already. So I say, hey, enemy. Right? Now he comes in and says when he comes in like a flood, and that could be pretty destructive, it says that we're supposed to hold up a standard. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, my whole world's going to turn upside down because it's going to, as we said in the first part of uh, John 16, it's going to get just all messed up. It says hold up a standard. What's on the standard? Ask myself that question because that's how I read the Bible. Jesus. I'm, holding, I'm not holding up anything I've done. I'm not righteous in myself. I'm only righteous because of Jesus. So I hold up, I'm saying, in Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Remember when we started this series of way, way back, right, Andy? Remember that? We said, we, the first series we did together when he came up here was, we're taught, you guys, everybody, that the answer is very simple. Put a little uh, graphic on the screen, had a little, little uh, girl in Sunday school raising her hand. 
the, our, our children's church, answers Jesus. Yeah. So because of Jesus, I have this authority. And I'm going to say, in Jesus' name, you have to flee. And the biggest thing, I know, you know, sometimes we don't have, we don't have people beating down our doors and, and doing the stuff that's happening overseas. But sometimes the enemy just comes after us in our head. Right? And we say, no, Jesus. 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 And sometimes when I'm driving down the road and I get all these weird thoughts in my head, I just say the name out loud. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, you're the answer. Jesus, you can take this out of my, out of my life. These emotions I'm going through right now, no, Jesus, you could, you, you, Jesus, can take care of this for me. And then after a few minutes, after battling with that for a few minutes, then I'm, that, those thoughts leave. They're just gone. I don't know where to go. I don't really care. They're gone. And joy comes back in my heart. Amen? How do you like to be happy? Joyful people? Come on, smile, you can see. All right, practice joy this morning. Very good, very good. All right, our joy can be made complete. Where did I leave off on that? Verse 12. Verse 12. Thank you. I, I have much to say to you, more than you can bear, okay? But when he, the Spirit, is a person, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, there, he's a person. He was there in the beginning. He, the Spirit of truth, comes. He will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit will come. The Spirit of truth is His name also. He will come and lead you to all truth. Does it mean Bible truth? Yes. Does it mean truth in the world? Yes. I'm sitting in a class. I took a, a college class when I came here. Psychology class. I hate psychology. I think you're like... So I'm sitting in this class, and the lady who was teaching the class, first thing she does is she draws on the corner of the chalkboard, she writes God. G-O-D. And she puts a box around God. So we already, and she was like this, she makes this general statement. We know there's a God. But in this class, we're not going to talk about Him. Truth. The Spirit of God in me? I was like, I don't think so. I mean, this is the first day of class. All these young minds there, I think they're like, no, my shepherd, they're my sheep. I have to take care of these young minds, right? I was like self, I mean, righteous, I don't know what it was, but I'm going to protect these guys because this lady is an idiot. I mean, in darkness, not in light. She's a pre-Christian. She's a future Christian. I have to say positive things, right? Um, you don't want to call people idiots. It's not a good thing, right? It's just an idiot. Um, the future of believers, right? I don't know if she ever will be with you. But anyway, so she teaches a class, first day of class, second day of class. I'm just getting angry and angry. How do you teach this junk? This is like a class that you get credit for in college. This is ridiculous. There's no truth in that whole class. I mean, some of the people she was talking about were actually lived, I guess. But what is this philosophy? There's no truth in it. I'm like, excuse me. You can't do that. I can't do what? You can't eliminate God. You have no reason for anything that you believe. There's no truth in what you're saying. It was on then. <laughs> so I just dropped the class. I wasn't going to deal with it. I, I guess that the battle wasn't mine. But anyway, it was just crazy. There, the Spirit of God in every situation, no matter what you're doing, is there because he's beside you, right? He's a partner with you. He's right there. And he's in you. And so in every situation, he's going to lead you to truth. Even when things go on in the world around you because there's darkness and light. And our job is to be light. Amen? We can't do it on our own. So he's going to give us the truth. We have no truth. Look at the next part, next part of the verse. It says, he will not speak of his own. So the Holy Spirit is going to speak what he, what, uh, he will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what, he, it, 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 what is yet to come. So the Holy Spirit is going to only hear, tell you what he hears from the Father and from Jesus. And he's going to tell you what's going to come up next. How many want to know what their future is going to be? How many know that God like, knows that already? Right? And he's going to be able to tell you what that is. Wait a second. The Holy Spirit will tell you what's to come. Not only in the future of the, uh, what he's going to happen here for, for the disciples, but also in your life. This is what I love about the Word of God. It happened. 
is a, this, 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 these events happen, and it also applies to you and me. So God knows. So isn't there some joy in knowing that God knows what's going to happen in your life? It not, might not be a, a party on the way through the journey, but it's going to be a party on the other side of the journey. Come on. He goes on to describe just a little bit about childbirth. I love, I was there for all five of my children being born. It was some great joy. I almost passed out the first one. Let me tell you. It was in an old naval hospital at Camp Lejeune. Uh, Charity was about to be born. And uh, I was nuts. I'm reading my Bible in the waiting room because they were going to check make sure the baby's coming. And this big African-American southern woman comes into the room and says, Honey, it's time to have a baby. I'm like, Oh my goodness. I think I walked in three walls before I made it out the door. That's not great. That was nuts. So we're in the room and we're watching the baby, the baby monitors on so you get to see the, the contractions come and the contractions go away. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. Crazy stuff. Honey, here it comes. She could have slapped me. <laughs> right? I mean, what else am I supposed to do? I'm in the room, I got the monitor, right? Anyway, the story's crazy. But I, uh, they wanted me to put on as we're getting ready, the baby's coming. So they want me to put on this little uh, sanitary hospital thing, like made out of paper. So I put on the, the pants, I put on the jacket, and then they wanted me to put on booties. These little booties? I ripped my booty. So they're, you the same thing, you know, I ripped my little booty. Right? So they got, Tina was, we're, they didn't have birthing rooms nice like they have now. I mean, this is nice. You know, you go in there, everything's done in the same room, but we had to go to the operating room. room or whatever, delivery room. It was crazy in there. It was like lights and everything. It was like nuts. And uh, so I walk out of the, the restroom with this booty in my hand, and the nurse was there, of course. I said, I ripped my booty. You know? And she, and she just looked at me, it'll be okay. Come on, let's go. <laughs> So I'm in the birthing room with my booty in my hand when my daughter was born. So, but there was great joy at the end because there was charity, our firstborn, and great joy came. And that's what the Lord says here. It says we're gonna. It's going through trials and tribulations is like childbirth, but there is great joy. So for the disciples, what happened is that Jesus was going to be arrested soon, and. He was, and he was, he was crucified, and he went through a horrible death. And we can read in the, the Gospels how the fear came over them, and they weren't sure what was going to happen, and they scattered. And uh, just Peter was left, and even Peter denied him during that time. But he said, I'm going to come back, and there's going to be joy. And so he went through that child's birthing, that, 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 all those trials and tribulations during that time, and then all of a sudden on the other side, when they saw Jesus, there was great joy. Matter of fact, Thomas kind of said, are you, are you really Jesus? Like, everybody I see doesn't believe me, but let me touch you to make sure that you're really Jesus. And there was great joy. There was great joy. And the Holy Spirit gave them comfort and peace, and they gathered together. And then Jesus appeared to them. And, oh my goodness, I don't know about you, but I think you're... It, you know, that's a recorded in the scripture, but I think there was like a party. I mean, I think, you know, I mean, it wasn't like, like, oh my, you're, you're, everything came true, what you said was going to happen came true. I believed it because it says they believed that he was the son of God. They believed that the father was real. They believed it and it reconfirmed it here. But then at that moment, I mean, it happened, right? That's what's going to, I can't wait to that day when I see Jesus. And maybe we go through some trials and tribulations now in our life. Maybe we're going through some stuff. But we're going to see him. Amen? And we're going to have, it says there's a banquet table waiting for us. A huge party that we're going to be with him. Amen? So this is how I want to close the service today. I want to, I want to, I want to just go finish and uh, finish reading the rest of the scripture. And, but I want to go back to verse 23. It says, in that day, what day? When he returns. So when I was reading this this week, I said, Tina, I told Tina, I said, read this verse again, because in that day, in my mind, I thought about that day that we get to see Jesus. And it's going to be a great day. And I read this verse over, I read this chapter over, and over, I probably read this chapter 
15, 20 times this week because I was trying to understand how this all comes together when their joy is going to be complete. Their joy was complete because now Jesus was raised from the dead by the power of God. Amen? And they got to see him. And the Spirit of God gathered them together. And as we'll be learning over the next couple weeks, then he told them to do something. They go to Jerusalem and tarry for a while. And the Spirit of God will be poured out on them so they can be and do, and no matter what happens, that Holy Spirit will be with you and guide you. And whatever the world throws on you, you're going to be able to pro uh, proclaim my message throughout the whole world. Right? If death happens, or, or tragedy happens, or whatever happens in your life, the most important thing is that Jesus is glorified. Amen? And that Holy Spirit will never leave us. And it says here, because of that, you will no longer um, ask me anything. So when you pray, this is something for new people that are learning how to pray. When we pray, we don't have to pray to Jesus. We can pray to the Father now. And there's a whole other study on that where when the curtain in the temple is ripped from top to bottom, it represented the old covenant is over and the new covenant. Now you and me can talk to Father God in the name of Jesus. He describes that right here. Is that cool? Right? You can talk to Father God. You can talk to Jesus. You can talk to the Holy Spirit. It's fine. Anyway, but when you pray, it says this is how you should pray. And he shows that in Matthew 6. He talks about that too. But anyway, it says, I tell you the truth. Um, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I'm just thinking like right now, like I need a bigger wallet. <laughs> Wrong thought. Okay, this is just so like, no. Because he's already going to provide that for you, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, it says, until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Amen? Mm -hmm. So, I want to, can, can, hey, Andrew, could you bring that whiteboard up here? Tina, would you my banner white for you? We're going to, we're going to ask God. So we're going to do this. We want to ask. We're going to go around the room today. See, see, because we're like a loving family church. Right? So what are you asking God for? What are we asking God for? Right? What do we, what if, so let's look at what asking God. So it says, whatever you're asking God, it says, you will receive. Ask and you will receive. And your joy will be made complete. So if you go down to verse 4, it says, In that day you will ask in my name. I am asked, not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved Jesus. So if you love Jesus, you're going to ask the Father and, and have believed. The word believe is what? I believe. I, I adapted and hear my life to Jesus. So I just don't believe because I need help right now. I Because I know he can help me. I adapted and hear my life to. So I believe that I came, I came from God. That Jesus came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. So he, he's saying this, and then go down to the last part. I have um, verse 31. You believe at last Jesus answered, but they answered the question right. But at the time is coming and has come when you will be scattered, each of you into your own home. You will leave me uh, all alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. So Jesus, even when Jesus went to the cross, he wasn't alone. Right? Because the Father is with him, and he's with you and me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Hallelujah. God wants you not to have joy complete, but he wants you to have peace. How many want peace this morning? Amen. And I have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. Oh, I had to read that part. I was praying this morning. I said, God, I, I want to pray. I want to say like the whole thing. I don't want to just like, oh, it's all good. You, your joy will be complete and you'll be happy and you'll have peace, but it says you also have trouble. 
This is the true gospel. But Jesus is with you. The Father is with you through his Holy Spirit. Amen? And it says this last part is so beautiful. Look at this in your Bibles or on your phone. Look at it. So I want you to look at the words. It says, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Jesus has overcome every aspect of the world so I can have peace and I can have joy. He did it. We have victory in everything that we do because of Jesus. Or maybe I won't have victory, but through that I'll have joy and peace. Amen? Come on, put a smile on your face. Just pretend if you have to. All right? Come on, joy and peace here. So let's do this. Let's ask God. What do, what do we want from God? Let's start. Okay. We'll start. Okay, go ahead. Yes, sir. Vindication. Vindication. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We're asking specifically that he would demonstrate himself to Daniel, Jerry's oldest son, through the miraculous sale of their house. Something that can only be explained by God and so a sale of Daniel's house but by God. The point is that by God. the only thing they could attribute it to is that God really did come. You know, God is in the house selling business. You know, Lord and Terry sold their house in two days. Yeah. And it's California. And they've had offers and then they've fallen through and now they're like, oh, it can't possibly sell. It's winter. And um, this is Lord and Terry's prayer when they prayed for the sale of their house. They prayed that whoever comes to buy their house would, would be able to afford the house. That it wouldn't be a burden to them. And the person that offered, the first offering on their house was the lady came with $200,000 down. So, be specific when you pray for them, and we'll go, all right? So for that Dan, Daniel to have confirmation that this is the sale of God. All right, who else? It says, ask anything. Nobody asks. I mean, the Father's like wants to answer your prayers. A deeper relationship with God. We are able to understand this word. A deeper relationship with God. I, I, I don't need to answer that one. We are able to understand that one. Amen. That's the heart of God. You want to know Him? You, you seek after Him and you will know Him, right? How about this side? Okay, we'll go back and forth. That, that my whole family lives out in 2 Timothy 1 7. That your whole family lives out in 2 Timothy 1 7 that says, Spirit of fear, but spirit of power and self-control. Amen. So, sound mind, right? Spirit. They don't have a spirit of fear, but a spirit of uh, power, power and a sound mind. Second Timothy 1.7. Yeah, and that's a great verse because a lot of times, you know, we got to understand that, again, the spirit of God is with you. And he is not giving you fear. This fear comes from the devil. Division comes from the devil. I mean, there's things that God doesn't, he didn't create those things. So when you are fearful, I mean, there's nothing wrong with kind of like, okay, God, are you really here with me? But if you have fear, then you have to examine that. Oh, I don't have joy. My joy is not complete right now, and I don't have peace. Because this is, oh, God. Come on. That's a good word right there. Right? If I'm going through a situation, and I don't have joy, and I'm, I don't have peace, then it's not from God. Then you have to do what I said earlier. In the name of Jesus, get out of here. Right? Because you have that authority. Everybody. I love it when children do it because they just believe. Tell them you got to leave. They just believe it, right? But then when we get older, we start reasoning and thinking things out. And we stop. It's more in our head of what we can do in our ability than faith. We have to believe. It's by faith that we believe in our Savior, right? It's not by anything we do. But if we believe, we have faith, just like the disciples did here. They believed Jesus was the Son of God, and they believed the Spirit was coming. And he says, oh, look it, I'm going to give you peace, because you're going to have trouble in this world. But peace is going to be on you. Hallelujah. Come on. Get I'm going to send you off to Southern California and get smiling at me. So that's it. That's awesome. All right. Uh, no, this side. Healing. Healing. How many pray for healing in their bodies? God, heal me, heal me. Years and years and years. I know where he's going. Yeah. But you know, there's still peace in that, right? Even if you slay me, I'm still going to serve you. Job said. No matter. You take my life. You take everything I own. It doesn't matter. You are God. You are Jesus. You are the Son of God. I believe that. 
So no matter what happens to me, hey, right? My joy will be full. David had, um, anybody read Fox's Book of the Martyrs? A little book about how people were martyred for the faith? It's a great book. People were going burned at stake singing Jesus, singing songs of Jesus. People were ripped apart, sawed in two. They did horrible things to Christians back in the day, they're doing them today even. There people are just, there's peace in that moment, and there's joy. Hey, I'm going to go see my Savior. Amen? There ain't nothing. Come on. Faith, right? Okay, what else? Well, ask anything. Oh, uh, wisdom to lead the family. Wisdom for your, lead your family. Oh, you guys get a real spiritual. I love that. That's, that's a good one. I want to know how to take care of Tina and my family, right? Because, uh, no, she's very easy. She needs wisdom to take care of me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Angel, ask God anything. You never thought about that, have you guys? This is really, this is why I'm doing this, because this is something we don't do. We don't just ask God for stuff. Like, what do we really need? We can do that. We pray when we have trouble. We always pray when we're desperate about something. But we just, he's sitting here like, he wants to, he knows everything you need. He knows everything you want. He knows all that already. He says, but we have to ask. Well, why doesn't God just give it to me? I don't know, because the word says, always ask, seek, and not. So there's got to be something about that. Right? Because when I'm seeking after God, this is what happens, I think, in my spirit, I think in us that it's happening right now, is that we realize when we're asking and seeking after God, the things that we want really don't matter when it comes to material things, when it comes to things in this world, right? All of a sudden, our desires begin to change. I just want to know Him. Like Moses, right? I want to see your face. I want to see, I want to know you. So, well, you can't see my face, Moses, but what I'll do, I'm going to put you in this little cave and I'm going to walk past you and you're going to be able to see my hand first. Oh, I remember that day. For weeks on end, I remember that weeks, I just would pray, God, I read that in the Bible, I said, I want, I want to see God. I mean, I want to see Him. I mean, if Moses did it, I can do it, right? I'm a little, I want to see God. I would pray, God, I want to see you, I want to see you. I get up in the morning, we lived in Sneaks Ferry, North Carolina. We lived in a, we had a mobile, uh, mobile home that uh, was near uh, the river. But anyway, um, I get up in the morning, I get dressed, get my military uniform on, I go in the living room. We had this uh, box furniture made out of like, I don't know, wood, whatever. And I sit there with my head down and I say, God, I want to see you, I want to see you. And I thought, well, I better look up if I want to see God, right? So then I sit up and say, God, I want to see you. I sit in the chair, I want to see you, I want to see you. And one morning, like God showed up in my little trailer in Seasbury, North Carolina. I know it wasn't God himself. The Spirit of God, I don't know, but it was presence of something awesome. I didn't become scared, but I came fearful that I was in the presence of God. I jumped with one move from that couch to the bed underneath the covers with Tina. Oh my, I was looking out the covers because I thought he was going like, to come in the room. The next day, right? The next day, I did the same thing. It went on for a few days. I just wanted to see God, but I knew it. I couldn't, in my, whatever this is, couldn't stand to be in the press of God. That was awesome. God will give you whatever you want. Seek after Him, because I could care less about where we live, what we have, food, car, material. I could care less about anything. All I wanted is I wanted to see Him. And He gave me the desire of my heart. Amen? And it freaked me out that day, and I'm still freaked out about it today. <laughs> and I guess that's good. You know, it's not a bad thing. Uh, um, sometimes when I'm in this building, and I'm in this, sitting over there praying, and then it gets so overwhelmed with his glory or presence or whatever you want to call it, I, just go, I go back in the office and say, like, ooh, that's just too much, you know? I don't know how that is, but just love on God. I just want to love on him. Because I want to be able to teach this word to you so you can get it into your spirit and know that you're not alone in this world. Be encouraged. The Holy Spirit that God promised is here to help you walk this thing out. Amen? With love and joy and peace oh, that you can't even comprehend because our minds just can't understand the fullness of God. But oh, I want to. I want to know Him. So we ask whatever we want. So what are we asking for? We want vindication. 
So we have issues that we know we know some of the story. We want we we need God to take care of it, right? We can't do it. But you know what? Jason and Ramey, it's like going through birthing things. It, there's joy in the side of the thing. There's gonna be a party. Amen? I hope we're gonna close the whole block off and we're gonna have a party. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right? And then uh Oh, for Daniel, right? for, for selling him his home so he knows who he is. That's more important. The selling him the home is not as important as, as, as Daniel knows Jesus. Right? Because God can take care of selling a home or get, providing a need. Come on. Deeper revelation to know him. Oh, you guys are real spiritual. Don't be asking for like, anything. How about a job? Who's looking for a job? Chris. Chris needs a job. Who's looking for that on there? Good job. How about else? What else? You're moving? What, what day are you moving? Next Saturday? So, uh, you're not going to ask, but you need, uh, Angel needs help moving next Saturday. So, how many people can help him? Just go see him after church. Anyway, he didn't, we won't ask that, but he needs help. What? Come on. Protection. For protection? Against the enemy. Protection against the enemy? You already have protection. So, the teaching moment. You have that authority because the Holy Spirit is with you, correct? Right? Over the enemy. If the enemy is coming and attacking you, then we need to identify what that is and command it to leave in the name of Jesus. So the, you'll recognize that by faith the Spirit of God is with you and the joy and the peace will be in you. Right? <laughs> right? The joy and peace because we know we have power over the enemy. So we need power over the enemy. Do you write that down? Protection over the enemy. No power over the enemy. Just get rid of protection. Because we already have that. Right. We want authority. We want we want power. We want to no, we want Andy. What do we want? We want to believe what the word of God says. That Jesus is overcome the enemy and you have power over them. So God the prayer should be, I'm just helping you guys right now. The, you don't mind? Well, the, the prayer should be help my unbelief, so I believe. Right? Help my belief. I want to, I know the enemy's after me. I know I have these issues. But I want to believe in my heart that Jesus has overcome that enemy that's attacking me. Come on. We know he has. He overcame. It says in the word, he died, he resurrected. So we have power over the enemy. So if we have power over the enemy, that means I might have to change my belief system because I have to believe that he can do it. All right? Is that okay? So you say, okay, Lord, please forgive me. So we have to repent. I know that's, nobody likes to use that word. Lord, forgive me for thinking this way about uh, I need to protection, but I don't, I already know I have protection. So help me to believe that I have protection, and I know that you have overcome all, all these enemies that are coming after me. Right? And we, and we deal with this with uh, people from, that come from Africa or, or India or some other countries that have a lot of witchcraft or all this stuff like that. So those things, those spirits that come after you, you have authority over that. Amen? And they have to leave in Jesus' name. So we'll deal with that in just a second. Anyone else? Financial blessings. Financial blessings. I need, Lord, see us being honest. I need, I need help. So we've, we're getting there because we have needs, right? And I think not only that God wants us to draw closer to Him and love Him and be with Him, but He will take care of everything that we need also. Because He loves you. He's your Father. Anyone else? Strength and courage to be a better daddy. Oh, you're, I think you're an amazing daddy already. Yeah. God will be there. Then you have joy and peace while you're going through it. It says. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Provision uh, take care of family. Provision for our family. We have a lot of responsibility, so yeah. Awesome. Anyone else? Patience. Patience. Oh, so the people say, don't pray for patience because if you have patience, trials will come. But you know what? Let's not believe that. Because you know what? God gives you that. So patience is really asking for peace in a situation, right? And he just said it will have peace. So we have to accept the peace, right? Because everybody, we all go through stuff. I like you guys to get real now. I like this. Anyone else? Joy. I want to be happy all the time. Yeah. 
We can be happy. We can be happy. Good night, sleep. Good night, sleep. There we go. <laughs> Peace. Right? I like that. You can be happy all the time because what, if we believe that Jesus said that you can do it, What's that song, Andrew? Andrew, that, remember at the end of Pi Alpha Dog and uh, Purdue, we did, we sang, uh, uh, Lean on me. Come on, sing it, bro. Sometimes parenting can be tough. 
And I just pray, God, for peace on my brother, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for uh, uh, just a peace over his children. Lord, as they learn to love of you because they see it in their daddy, Lord, I pray, God, you bless my yes. father. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Jesus' name. Jesus, thank you for uh, vi uh, vindication, Lord, over the situation for Jason and Ramey, Lord. Uh, I already know there's victory coming. Yes. God, there's not even a doubt in my mind, God. And I know they're going through a lot of stuff. But, God, I pray that you help through the stuff. God, through the, the headaches and the, the, the accusations, God, I pray for joy to be in their hearts. Father, I pray peace over their household for, for each one of them, Father. God, I thank you so much. Father, for Daniel, as he uh, is selling his house, God, the purpose is not to move or whatever, God. I, the purpose of the sale of his house is that you you be revealed to him, God. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how you get to do that. You can do it, just like you did for Lord and Charity, God. You brought somebody that just uh, was able to pay more than than what it was the house was worth. Well, I thank you for that. Oh, God. Yeah. You did it. No one else. We know you did it. Father, we believe. Yeah. Come on. Everybody say it. We believe. We believe. Yeah, yeah. we believe. Hallelujah. Father, for uh, our whole family, for, for uh, Justin and Cammie, Lord, for the whole family to live, uh, Father, with uh, in their minds, uh, would all fear cast away, God, and that the Holy Spirit would be right there to guide them and lead them. God, I thank you for that, Lord. Father, peace over this family, Lord. Father, I pray for a, revela a greater revelation of your provision and your future for them. Father, God, I thank you for that. God, I pray for a greater revelation, Father God, for each one of them, for each one of the children, Lord God, to, to, to understand your peace that surpasses all understanding. That, Father, we can't, we don't even understand why we're walking in peace, but peace comes over this household, God. And we thank you for it, God. All we can do is just thank you. Yes. Hallelujah. Even right now, Father, I pray peace over this family, right God. Father, right now, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Father, where the enemy comes in to try to, 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 to change that, Father, I rebuke that in the name of yes. Jesus. Yes. Satan, you have to leave in Jesus' name. Thank you for the peace and the joy that will return to this family, Lord God. You know all the stuff they've been through, God. Father, I pray for that. Father, I pray for a good night's sleep, Father God. Hallelujah. I remember the times when I just prayed all night long and fell asleep in your peace, waking up praying to you, Lord God. I pray for that for, for Ramey, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. All the, every time your mind goes travels to a problem or a situation or a, a, a thing and your mind doesn't turn off, God, I pray just to turn it off in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Turn off all that stuff. Just bring your joy and peace, Lord, and let them be a rest into this household, Lord, in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. Wisdom to lead your family, Lord Jesus. Provision for the family, Lord God. Strength and wisdom, Lord God. Financial blessings. Father, I pray, hallelujah, every one of us in this room, we have, we've seen it hundreds of times since I've been in Madison, Lord God, where people have gotten promotions after promotions after promotions. God, and I just pray our hearts just be give all the glory to you. Yes. I pray every promotion, every advancement, God, will not be of our own God, it will be from you. And we recognize it. Holy Spirit, as you walk alongside us, as you remind us that our promotions only come from heaven above, God, I just pray that as we get promoted, we give thanks and praise to God. We'll come dancing in the sanctuary going, Whoa, look what God's done again. Whoa, look what God's done again. Thank you, Lord. You're so amazing that you did it. You did it again, God. It's nothing I've like done all the glory goes to you, God, and I thank you for that. And Father, I pray for Juanita right now. Jesus. Father, heal this lady. Yes. This wonderful woman of God. Father, I pray for complete healing in her body from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet, God. Yes. Hallelujah. Remove the sickness and disease in Jesus' name. Lord, we know that Jesus provided that healing from sickness. And anything that we go through physically, Lord, through the stripes that he bore on his back, it says in Isaiah 53, Lord. Yes. Father, we thank you for that. So, Father, we heal. I pray say, just be healed what you did in Jesus' name. Jesus. And we thank you for Jesus' Amen. healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, pray your peace to continue to sustain these people, your, your people, Father. Let your peace just fill them Father. with joy. Let your peace be there in every situation. Lord, I love you. Will you tell Father God you love him this morning? Father, we love you. We thank you for all that you've done. And we give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name.
Amen. You know what's so beautiful about that? That we know that the Spirit of God is with us. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Hallelujah. What's so beautiful is that the Spirit of God is with us, and then He gave us each other. Right? Because He considered us a family, right? So get it, son. Lead on, man.